Hi hey guys, been playing with this uh, keyboard matrix. Um, nothing fancy really, but it, I thought it was uh, an interesting learning experience, so I thought I'll share. Um, for those of you who don't know, inside this keyboard, well, let me show you what it does first. Uh, it's just like I said, it's just an experiment. I have a uh, processing sketch out there that takes the output of the Arduino sketch. There's an Arduino sketch running right here that reads this and then spends uh, basically sends the uh, the value and then it just displayed it on a big letter on the processing sketch. But basically it works. You can press any of these and it's reliably um, showing the value. Yeah, it even have this. So it's four by four. So it has extra and they, they put ABCD over here and an asterisk and pound sign. So basically it works and the thing that's more interesting that, than that actually is how I actually read it. It's probably not a really a practical thing but it's an interesting learning experience. Let me uh, move this out of the way. Put a uh, multi-tester and uh, let's, talk about, let's talk about how it actually works. So um, inside one of, the, one of these keyboard matrix is basically a grid of wires, one going across, well four, four across and four going down and they're not connected to each other and wherever there is an intersection the switch actually will connect those two wherever, wherever it intersect if there you press the switch there it will actually connect these two wires and by uh, sending signal one way or the other let's say we send signal this way and see which one of these uh, output pins actually will have a, a voltage so let's say we're watching this one well, maybe it's easier to show over here so let's say we press um, let's say we press this one so d in order for for us to detect where, where which one it is we basically say is it this one so we send a plus 5 over here and then we'll see if which one of these actually return plus 5 and if this is the one that's pressed this is the only one who's going to return plus 5 this one is an open circuit nothing is happening there nothing's happening there nothing's happening there so only this one will return plus 5 and we know that this that means it's one been pressed because the only one that has voltage is this one these guys don't have voltage either so it must be that they press 1 when we uh, send the signal over here and we get something here it must be one that was pressed and so let's take another one just for another example so let's say they press that one you know when we check this nothing happens when we check this then we say hey this happens here uh, so because we supply the voltage over here we know it must be eight that can can pull output here so when we're putting the uh, output over here nothing happens down here because you know these these are not connected so that way this when we're checking this row here none of these will have any voltage it's not until we hit this one you know we check this one we check this one nothing happened we check this one and then this one will have a voltage because that's the only one that has connection over here this one will be open that one will be open that one will be, that one will be open so that's the principle of it and normally what you would do is you would put uh, four of the Arduino pins over here and four as output and four Arduino pins over here as input so it takes eight pins to read to read this keyboard what I've done over here is actually I'm only using four pins on the Arduino as you can see here uh, there this is just plus and minus and this is the four pins so instead of using eight pins we're using only four pins so the other four pins could be used for other things um, and the way it works is basically it's using a voltage ladder let me show you how it, the actual circuit I'm going to rotate this so it's it makes a little bit more sense I think because it looks like more or like a voltage ladder so a voltage ladder is a, uh, a, a whole bunch of resistor in series and to make things simple I actually use the same resistor value this is R01 k there's five 1k resistors all put in series from 0 to 5 and the effect is if you do the calculation using I think it's like Ohm's law then uh, you would get um, because these are equal values it basically will divide the whatever value here into equal values 
and just by coincidence I have five of them and this is five volt so each of these will be worth one volt and I can show you that right here so this is my voltage router it corresponds to that over here there's plus five over here and ground over here so let me show you that over here we should see five volts Come on, it's there somewhere. Okay, here goes. 4.95, close enough. So if I go down to this point here, it's about 4 volts. If I go down one more, 3, 2, and 1. One like this, basically that's 1, 2, 3, four and five so and then so all I do is basically I have those four coming in here onto the matrix and then I watch the output here using analog pin zero through three four analog pins watching over here the only difference between this and what we talked about earlier instead of putting always five volts we're putting either one volt two volt three volts or or four volts as the input and then seeing where the, those you know, let's say it's the the four volts seeing where vol four volts appear on one of these pins we know whether it's that one that one or that one or that one is being pressed so i thought it was pretty clever and it actually works as you can see so let's go to look at some code and then um we'll see how it actually how i actually read this and turn them turn these four analog values into the actual output okay I've uploaded a different sketch this is uh, version 1 uh, the one that we saw earlier is version 2 that has actually converted all the analog values and spit out the actual character that was pre pressed this one is simply going to spit out the analog values themselves and not try to decipher which key is actually being pressed so let me see it show you how that runs so it displays eight numbers. The first four digits are the raw analog values from uh, analog 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then the next values are basically the interpretation as to what column was actually uh, the data coming in from. So that's, uh, let me press number 1 right now. Oh, hang on, where's my... Uh... Okay, I'm going to press 1 now. Notice how this value lower is, is changing. So that's basically what we're seeing is the one volt that's over here going through there and uh, I'm pressing this one and goes right there. And none of the other columns are showing any values. They're the default 1024 because I didn't press any of these. So if I press the next one, which is two over here, now the value rises because now we're actually seeing the two volt. And if you keep on going to press 3, the value keep on rising. And here is 4. And so by uh, watching this one pin, which is this one pin right here, this A0, we could tell which one of these 4 is being pressed. And the same thing goes through the next row. If I press number 4, this one right here, the same low value comes in, the 1 volt comes in through here. Uh, but it's not coming through here because I'm not pressing the one so it goes from here through here and down here and so on and so forth and so if I press the D character all the way down up here so that's the highest value possible 831 coming in from here through there all the way down here and none of the other ones are connected because I'm not pressing any of them and then the next column over here, I mean the, the next four set of digits here is I convert the value, you know, like the, what was it, 234, 437, 600s, and 800s, and convert those into 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. 4 meaning none of them pressed, 1 means the first column, second column, third column, and fourth column. So 
and then by looking at those then uh, it should be pretty straightforward to figure out what is the actual value by just looking at this table over here um, I will leave it up to the uh, reader to <laughs> see that code it's pretty simple right here oh it may be that not that simple uh, I'm it's kind of cryptic but I like it short you could write this as if then else if then else if then else but basically uh, it is I don't remember what it's called so here's the first set so there's a condition right here that says if this is true set the value to this value otherwise set the set the value to this value well what I did is that this value is now another similar expression so when when it's not less than 360 it's going to evaluate this whole thing when it is not uh, less than 500, 548 it's going to evaluate this whole thing and so on and so forth so that's how that works and let's see yeah this is just basically printing the analog value and then printing the converted value that you saw up there earlier this analog to index convert the a0 a1 through the actual column indexes so that's the first version and the next version simply takes that one step further I clean them up a little bit such that instead of doing this manually like this it's actually in a loop now but it's basically the same thing it just does it in a loop instead of manually doing it one by one so that's the setup oh here's something interesting uh, even though we're reading this analog reads here it is important to set the the analog how do you explain this <laughs> The if you don't do this, this is called a pull-up resistor, I think. Uh, by putting a, this pull-up resistor here, by setting it too high, even though this is actually the input, but but by setting that in that setting that input high, you say that there should be a pull-up resistor there. So if there is no input whatsoever, it's going to assume that you uh, want it to be plus five, and that's why you, earlier you saw that when I don't press anything. The value was um, where is that? I'm so close to it. Yeah, that's why this is showing kind of like the default value because when I'm not pressing anything, it's going to pull that pin. By default, all four pins are going to be high. And it's important to do this, otherwise it will be floating, and you will get unreliable data. So that's what that's for. And then this is the same as before. And then the loop now, um, instead of just simply uh, doing it manually like this, it actually again has the loop for all the rows, and then reads them, and then does the same analog to index. And then uh, I just say if it is less than four, that means it's actually pressed because four means it's floating, that it's actually not not being pressed. So I don't press, uh, I don't set anything here, and it will default to a blank. Otherwise, if it's something is pressed, then it will use this row chars uh, array to look up what is actually the meaning of that, you know, either one of these four characters here. And then if the value changes, then I spit it out to the serial port. If the value doesn't change, I don't send anything, I don't send anything out. And then there's a delay for the analog digital look and further. I guess it can't go very fast. And then the processing sketch. Uh, we'll look at this value and just display it as a big number. That's it. But I think the more interesting thing is how this analog, this thing right here, is managed to uh, read 16 buttons, really, you know, 4 by 4 with just 4 analog pins. I thought it was pretty cool. So, thanks for watching, guys.